Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. And uh, let's see, last time uh, we actually just left from Morgan's house to uh, go to that first town. And I forget exactly what the name of that town is right now. But what essentially happened is we went up and we lit the beacon to sound the uh, cavalry to come in and kind of fight the um, the Darkspawn horde that was attacking uh, Ostrogar. But that rat bastard just sounded the retreat as soon as we needed him and basically left all our homies there to die. So now it's basically just me and All-Star here uh, left for the Grey Wardens. Um, the King got killed, uh, Duncan Hines got killed, you know, it was a very sad day in Dragon Age Origins history, but um, we also got ambushed, I don't know if we were set up or what happened in the top of the tower after we lit the beacon, uh, basically we just got uh, ambushed and pretty much got killed up there, and essentially we were dead but Morgan's mom came and actually saved us and nursed us back to health. So, so she kind of sent us on our way and actually sent Morgan with us to kind of be our guide and to help us gather up uh, an army to fight to fight the the blight, I guess. But um, as soon as we left, we were on our way to the first town, which I don't remember what it's called right now. And uh, we took a short detour here to the uh, Grey Warden Castle because this is a mod and it's like your very own castle and harem, I guess. And uh, essentially, I came in here just to check it out. I didn't know how bad it was going to be, but essentially, essentially... It, aside from these two rooms, it's pretty much empty. Uh, just a bunch of uh, bedrooms where you can go in and just kind of look. But there's no containers, there's no NPCs, no nothing. Only thing is really, um, we got the king here. We got this lady who kind of talks to us um, telepathically. And we got a cage dancer. So, so that's pretty nice. And then in here... Um, she is kind of like a um, a merchant, so we could sell all her stuff, and she also has like uh, enchantments and stuff like that. Uh, we have Mother Nature back there, which we got down and made a little love with, which was pretty fun. I mean, you know, it really didn't show anything. I, I kind of have everything uh, kind of censored, but if you want to check that out, check out the uh, previous episode, and you can can kind of see what happened. But uh, also we have a weapon rack here where we can store our weapons. We have a armor stand where we can store all our armor. And we have a storage chest where we can just put all the rest of our crap. So I went ahead and I sold some stuff. I stored some stuff. And now we're ready to go. So let's make our way on out of here and get on started. You can see one of the uh, bedrooms here. It's just kind of, you know, just a bed. You know, there's like cabinets and all of them. You can't access them. It would have been kind of cool if you could, you know, kind of put, I don't know, have more storage space. But I guess it's good that everything is kind of uh, uh, centered in, in that room. So if we ever need anything, we know we just go in there and basically get everything we need. So, all right, let's go ahead and we'll get going to Lothering. You know what? I think we could actually go to our party camp. Yeah, let's check that out because uh, supposedly I have another mod in here that will also um, add some other things. I can't remember exactly what that is right now. Uh, but yeah, you know, there's supposed to be some other things in the uh, party camp. I think I actually have some more uh, storage, I believe. I don't know where it is. Is that the storage? Is that the... No. Um, that's not storage. That's cheese. Uh, crap, I don't know. Oh, yeah. There you go. It was Misha the Hoarder. So. Greetings, Warden. Hey, she even got a voice. Who the hell are you? Forgive me. I am Misha. May I ask your name? I think you already know my name, huh? Why is it that you are within my camp? 
It is a pleasure to meet you. Hey. I apologize for my sudden intrusion. It's all right. I have been following you for some time. Really now? Why have you been following me? Very well. I have heard word of your cause from those that carry gossip across the lands, and have been following you in secret to support you on your plight. Really? Wow, okay. How do how, how you plan on supporting me? I have been gathering supplies and treasures from the various stops along your journey. I offer all that I have gathered to you, as well as being a keeper of all your things. Wow. That's very generous of you. Thank you very much. Yes, Warden. Feel free to look at my hoard. Wow, so she has like a lot of stuff and it's for free, huh? Oh, that's pretty cool. She has the uh, recipes. All right, well, I'll take your recipes. Thank you much. Uh, hell, I, I don't know. I don't even know what a lot of these things do, but that's okay. Sweet. And I actually just uh, cleaned out my uh, inventory. I mean, I, because, you know, some of the uh, mods I had installed, essentially what they did is they filled up my inventory just full of crap, you know. So I kind of cheated and I bumped up the, the, the inventory capacity because... Well, I mean, hell, it was like I was starting to fade and I was able to carry, like, I was only going to be able to pick up, like, 18 things or something like that. And I hadn't even started yet. I was like, man. So I went ahead and I, I modified this when I, when I, uh, um, did I change your face? I think I changed her face. So I, mean, I did it at the same time. And, the, yeah, the way I did that is I used, um, Dragon Age face replacer. I think that's what it is. And uh, if you guys want a uh, tutorial on, on kind of how to use that, that file um, or that program, just let me know and, you know, I can make one real quick. It, it's pretty straightforward. Um, little things to, to check out, but, but really not much. So, but uh, that seems pretty cool. This is Misha the Hoarder uh, mod, so she'll actually hold on to all our stuff. Now, let's see if I take the treasure... Wow, 15 gold. How about books? What books has she got? Right. Misha the Hoarder. Okay. I almost thought I was going to be able to sit down. But, uh... Alright, so that that's pretty sweet. Um, what the hell is this? Um, oh, this has to do with that... Um, the winter... The winter hold, or uh, the one where you could essentially um, uh, change up your gear and stuff like that. The winter forge. So let's see. Let's talk to her. Oh, she's uh, looks kind of funky with these lines on there. It's almost like they sliced her mouth open. Okay. Another telepathic um, speaker. Well, that's okay. You know. Misha is actually really nice. I don't think that's actually in the game. Um, I think that was added, and that was, you know, she had a really nice voice. Let's see. Mage of the Wardens. Surprise, you know I'm from the circle. Are you a mage? So I know I'm a mage. Here you are uninvited. A Danish outside the forest? What's the big occasion? This this is my camp, not alienage. Be gone, knife ears. <laughs> Good evening, you seem to know me. Were you looking for us? Okay, um, sounds good. Indeed, I was looking for you, Warden of Kinlock Hold. Kinlock Hold? Somehow it seems everybody does these days, but why? So really? And why is that? Because you decided to walk on the same path as Duncan of the Wardens, no matter what your reasons were. Hmm, okay. Were you a friend of Duncan? Indeed, but now is not the time for this tale. Well, okay, I guess. 
Fair enough, so tell me, why are you here? Or whatever, you happen to also have a reason to be here? So fair enough. Once I was a keeper of lore amongst my people, and today I came here to offer you lore. Not so much in the lore. Keeper, you're a Danish then. But what about your clan? I'm a mage, knowledge isn't a dumb name where I'm lacking. And what a Danish could possibly know about dark spawns. Yeah, I'm a mage. Knowledge isn't a domain where I'm lacking, necessarily. No, I've never heard of Arlathan. I sent some history coming. <laughs> Just skip to the useful parts. <laughs> Isn't it the ancient elven land from legend? It's just some meaningless and unsound elven legend. It's some old tale elves like to tell about their lost home. Ah, uh, say, isn't it the uh, ancient, ancient elven land from legend? It is indeed. In this case, is there something the legends do not say? Before the ages were named or numbered, our people called the land Elvehanen, which in the old language means place of our people. Okay. And the center of the world stood. Oh, and at the center of the world stood a great city of Arlathan, a place of lore where the where the best of the ancient elves would go to trade knowledge. Alright. Then humans came from the north. Brash, fickle, and warlike. Quick to anger and even quicker to fight. And as they were rushing and ambitious, the human world could change a lot while elves slept. The human world could change a lot while elves slept. Okay... Clans and tribes gave way to powerful empire called to Vinter, and in time they came in onto Elvahanen with demons and even dragons at their behest. Okay. It is said that, that the Tevinter magisters and their great destructive power to force the very ground to swallow Arlathan whole. Well, the Magister used their great pa destructive power to force the very ground to swallow Arlathan whole. Okay. Destroying eons of collected knowledge, culture, and art. Was everything lost then? When humans breached the great city of Arlathan, our people, fearful of the disease humans bore and the loss of immortality they caused, chose to flee rather than fight. Didn't they even consider to try to protect their city? Some did, others did not. Okay. Some of those who fled were captured and enslaved together with those surviving the battle. Others, alas few in numbers, were able to successfully escape the, from Tevinter's grasp. Okay. Ages passed away and then, and then Andraste came. The human children named name her pro prophet and revere her, yet we owls know her as a war leader, one who, like us, has been a slave and dreamed of liberation. Okay. We joined her rebellion against the Imperium and died beside her, unmourned in Tevinter bonfires. Okay. And then Shartan's dream became reality. As for their part in the war, Mephreth and Andraste's sons gave the elves the Dales. I don't believe there's such a tale in the, in the Chant of Light. Indeed, the Candigal describing Shartan's contribution to Andrassi's cause exists, but that text was considered heretical 
and has been removed from the channel light. Yet it is a truthful tale. Elves then undertook the long walk where elves from all the from all over Thetis immigrated to the Dales. We walked with what little we had on our backs. Some walked without shoes, for they had none. Whole families, women with infants, the old and young alike. Many perished along the way. Some died of exhaustion. Others simply gave up and fell by the wayside. And the gods rewarded those of us who did not waver by bringing us to the Dales. You keep seeing we and us. Yes, it was centuries ago. Or what I have the feeling you believe you were there. Wait, you were not there, were you? That'd be impossible. Okay, I'll roll it down. I do not believe it is much reverent to the tale or rel relevant to the tale. So I shall leave that to your imagination. Right. Halam, Halam Shiro. <laughs> the end of the journey was our capital in the Dales, built out of reach of the humans. For a time, it was home, and a handful of elves who had escaped during the sack of Arlathan came to Halam Shuro. <laughs> our people <laughs> revived the lost lore as best we could, isolated us as elves were meant to be. Most of the lore from Elvin Hainan, Elfinen. Man, this is a, this is a lot of reading here. What the hell's going on? I thought this was just gonna mod my armor. <laughs> Most of the lore from Elva Hainan could not possibly be restored, but we did recover much of our ancient magic. Be maybe because Majory is hard to forget, and with enough time and talent, easy to learn. Okay. Scrolls of lore were made, recording and preserving the secrets of ancient knowledge we restored, and for centuries forth, until our very present time, those writings were known as Hallam... Hallam Shirol Scrolls. <laughs> okay. But you already know that something went wrong. Our ancestors' worship of the old elven gods angered the human chantry. The Chantry wanted to convert elves to their worship of the Maker, but we would not submit. They, they demanded aid against the Second Blight, but we refused to help after ages of slavery spent at their hands. From prov provocation to aggravation, we ended up at war with those serving the very descendants of Maphrath and Androste. Originally, only the Orlesian Empire went to battle with us. We responded with fury so fierce the Empire couldn't endure it. I just remain silent. Soon other Androstian nations joined the exiled march against us, and so we lost our home for a second time. We were not enslaved as we were before. But our worship of the ancient gods was now forbidden, and so was our magic. Once more, many, e many elves slowly forgot the scraps of lore we had maintained through the centuries. What about the scrolls you talked about? Were they lost? Not every single one of them, though many were lost. Which is, truth be told, the reason my, my presence here tonight, Warden. So you want me to find these scrolls? Not only that, I happen to have some scrolls in my possession. And I hope you will come across others during your travels. Yet you will also need my assistance. Why would I? I'm a mage myself unless you forgot. Uh, how come? 
Even if I tried, I would not be able to teach you unless you had the time and desire to learn for years. Furthermore, there is a reason why the magical arts described in the scrolls are hardly ever mastered by human mages. Yeah, not every mage in the circle is human. Yet the elves calling the circle their homes are quickened in the fashion of humans. The magical arts described in the scrolls require a quiet and peaceful mind. Humans, and in a lesser extent... I think it's supposed to be extent, right? And in a lesser extent, elves living under their rules are on the contrary prone to violent emotions. No, I don't, I don't believe in chopping them off, so I just remain silent. Therefore, I will be lending you my art, Warden. You will nonetheless have to gain an understanding of the forces at work and study the theories described in the Hal Halum, Halum Sheryl Scrolls. Why would I need to... Why would I need that if you're going to be the one doing magic? We will both have our role, Warren. I shall now give you some of the scrolls I've been preserving over the years. May you find others. He could have started right at that part. <laughs> Any idea where I could find other scrolls? As surprising as it may well be, few people are aware that of these writings' value. For most, they're only scattered, tarnished scrolls written in Elvish, a language forgotten by all but a handful. I see. Thank you, then. I shall leave you to your studies for now. Goodbye. Damn it, that was a lot of reading, man. Holy crap, I thought it was just going to be like, hey, here's the anvil, this is how you use it, and this is the uh, the enchantment thing. You could add magic to your stuff, check it out. But it was like, man, it was like a novel there. Well, that, that's okay, though, you know. What you got in here? I ain't got nothing in there. So is this more storage for me? As you desire. Let's see. Here you'll have some control over the Winter Forge, module mechanics, and debug options. Oh, okay. Uh, show the cheat code pop up. No, 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 no. I'm alright. Uh, the anvil, the enchantment, hotel, pile of Alum Shrill Scrolls. With the introduction of the enchantment interface. Oh man. You can summon the interface by using your enchantment skill with the empty hotel. The pile of scroll remains. Man. It's too fast because they are overriding each other. Uh oh. Now what? Now what? Well, that's a little bit too much for me right now. So yeah, that's the uh, <laughs> that's the Winter Forge, I guess. Um, hell, I think uh, maybe next time I'll uh, check out exactly how to use it. Um, that was a little bit too much reading for me. Uh, yeah, you know, it was um, it was okay. You know, it wasn't too bad. And it's, I'm not the best reader, I'm not the best reader out loud or anything, but. Um, all right i mean i guess i struggled through it uh, i could talk to our people here kind of liking this uh misha the hoarder um i like that it, that i didn't have to read that she just like talked to me it's like okay i was you know it felt like more relaxing the other one was like man i'm reading all this stuff with all these crazy names but that's all right you know <laughs> 
<laughs> because supposedly um, you can do a whole bunch of stuff with like the anvil and the enchantment altel or whatever that is. Um, things along the line of changing up, you know, the look of your weapons, changing up the look of your armor. Um, I think you could even just create stuff out of thin air. Uh, yeah, or you can, you know, change the enchantments you have on there. I'm not exactly sure, you know, how you're supposed to do it or exactly uh, what you need to do it. But, um, yeah... Um, one of the things I was kind of hoping I can do, which I'm not sure if I can, is, uh, let me see, I have this mod in here that, uh, gives me these two, uh, armors. They're, um, I guess the TNT armors. And you see they're, they're massive armors, uh, tier three. Now, they're, they're not the best, but, uh, I do like the way it looks. The only problem is they only give you two so at most you could only have two and this one was kind of a, a pain as well I mean as long as well as this uh, the wings of velvet um, because if you have them active when you start a new game you, you'll never get them even you know no matter what you do well seemingly that was that was my problem with it basically what was going on is I started a new game and I had like the TNT armors already installed and I had the uh, the uh, wings of velvet already installed thinking that you know I could kind of start with them and it seems like well you can't do that so what I did is I went ahead and I uninstalled the, the wings of velvet uninstalled this uh, TNT armor uh, force loaded the game, saved it, went back out, reinstalled these uh, uh, mods back in the you know the wings of velvet and TNT armors. Came back in, still went and added. it. The only way I was able to do it was to totally uninstall the mod, um, both of them. Uh, these are the only two I've experienced this with, but there may be other ones that that have the same kind of deal or you totally uninstall that mod and then you start a new game and the first time you're able to save you just save quit out of the game and then you add these mods back in and you start it up and it just magically adds it to your inventory so i'm, I'm thinking it, it may i mean i don't know why it just it makes more sense to me this way that when you first start the game um since it's in the intro portion of the game where you're not actually in control of your character and you don't even have an inventory at that time or it's not active uh, the game goes ahead and adds these things for you but since you don't have inventory or anything they just kind of get lost in the mix however a flag goes onto your game save saying that these items have already been added and even when you uninstall this mod um, well this mod or this one then that flag stays on your game save no matter what so even if you re-enable it and you start it up it's thinking that you've already received them and then for some reason it won't give you another one so those are kind of a pain uh, but yeah I mean basically the, the way you have to do it is you uninstall these mods or make sure that they're not installed you start a game and you just make a save then you re-add the mod and when you load up your game it'll add these things to you the problem is you know like i was saying when when i did that um since it's it adds all these items and stuff into your inventory when you start out your inventory is almost full you know depending how many mods you add you know you could actually be um, over encumbered well I don't think that's what they call it in here but um, make it so you can't loot anything and like if you're like a mage or whatever you're in the fade and there's really nothing you can do you know but just you can't pick anything up and stuff like that so that's why I kind of had to go through and I up my uh, my carrying capacity you know 
notes. So that, that's the cheat I'm kind of rolling with. Along with the cheats that, you know, the uh, <laughs> the bonuses that that this, this uh, mage set gives me. Along with, you know, sometimes switching over here to get the uh, armor boost or whatever. But, you know, other than that, it, it's... You know, I, I'm not cheating too much. Uh, there are ways I can cheat uh, with, uh, let me see, which one was it? Uh, not in here, not in there, not in there. In here, where, oh God, where is it? No, not in here, must have been in uh, here. The first one I looked at. So this utility sack here, um, you can essentially, um, it, it's pretty cool because like you can sell stuff, uh, without being at a vendor, which is really handy, but it also has some, some cheat stuff where you can just give yourself, you know, uh, you know, five attribute points or whatever, or five, um, you know, skill points or, well, I don't know. Uh, I forget how many of each one or attribute points or skill points or spell points so you can essentially just push your character like way up there right off the bat but you know I'm, I'm resisting I don't, I don't need to do that I mean it's not like the game is, is so hard you know of course that, that may change later on and be like god damn how am I supposed to pass this where's the utility set no I'm just I'm just playing <laughs> but uh, yeah um Man, this is a boring ass episode, so I'll probably label it that too. Um, even though it was kind of cool, you know, um, seeing uh, Misha the Hoarder and uh, checking out the um, this year uh, Winter Forge. I didn't actually make anything. I should have, you know, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that at another time. I was kind of impressed that Misha the Hoarder actually had a uh, voice acting and actually really nice voice acting as well. But uh, yeah, made it nice. I'm saying it made it like, like uh, relaxing. But can't talk to her anymore for some reason. So, well, a little disappointing. She had a nice voice. All right, so. Yeah, Morgan over here. Check out her new look. I guess she's supposed to look like, um, I think her name was Victoria Johnson. She was actually the, uh, the model that, uh, Bioware used to, to try to model Morgan to. And their Morgan didn't look nothing like that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but alright, I'm just babbling now. Uh, I'm going to kick it over here by the fire, and I'm going to save it, and we'll pick it up next time, or we'll actually try to do something. So, <laughs> sorry this one was so boring, I wasn't expecting to uh, have to read a whole novel, checking out that Winter Forge. Uh, I was thinking I can just check out, you know, the uh, extra stor storage I was going to have, and be like, cool, let's go. But uh, I let in a whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm just babbling on for the past like five minutes or whatever. Uh, like diarrhea of the mouth, whatever. Okay, so I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> All right.